Hello students, I want to show you how to use Desmos because I think it's a great tool for what we are about to do. Um, so go to Desmos and launch the calculator. Uh, let's just look at a couple of basic things that you can do first. So it can graph whatever equations you want, which is kind of cool. I like to define my equations as functions, so you can rewrite it as f of x. If you want to change your variable, you can write it as f of t or f of a or f of whatever else you want. Um, I often write a whole lot of different functions and I run out of letters that make sense to name them. So if you use the underscore character, you can give it a subscript here and then you can define another function that's something else. and you can have them both at the same time. So this is just a nice naming convention. All right, what else can you do? Um, you can make individual points display using your conventional XY point notation like this. Um, let's have it display Let's have it display a point that has an x value of 1 and a y value of whatever my function evaluates 1 to be. So now this is guaranteed to be on the curve. Instead of having it 1, let's make it some variable like k and f of k. And it's asking me if I want a slider. Let's make a slider. Now I can slide this around and it's drawing a point at k f of k for whatever my particular function is. And if I want to change my function, to be a different function, it's still evaluating at k and f of k. So that's pretty cool. All right, what else can we do? Um, let's create a table of values. You can add item and go to table, and you see it's displaying a table. But I want it to actually evaluate my function, which is the f subscript p function. And I'm going to evaluate it at f subscript 1. In case you forgot how to do the subscript, it is the underscore character. And as you can see, for all the x values, it's got y values, and it's displaying where they plot. So that's nice. Um, if I want it to display values other than what it has right here, I can type in my own values. So I type 1.2, and it's evaluated 1.2. I can have more down here. So I could say 4.5, and now it's evaluated at 4.5. So this is another convenient thing you can do. All right, well, we're in calculus, so uh, we might want to do some calculus things. I can say y equals d slash dx. So that's their symbol for derivative. Um, and what's the function I want to take the derivative of? I want to take the derivative of f subscript p of a. Oops, excuse me. I don't want x here because I want the derivative with respect to a because the a is my variable. And as you can see, it's displayed the derivative. Um, let's change it to a function that you recognize. Oops, not x squared, a squared. So here's x squared, and you know its derivative is 2x, and there's the derivative function. Um, let's say that we wanted to construct a tangent line to this function. How would we do that? Um, I'm going to have my y value. So I'm going to do something like this. I want slope times x minus x1 plus y1. All right, I don't want sliders for these because I actually want to calculate what these things are going to be based on my function. So my, uh, I guess let's choose, let's choose my x1. Let's add a slider for x1 because that's uh, the point at which I'm going to construct my tangent line. y1 is going to be whatever my function is evaluated at x1. So I don't need a slider for that. Um, my slope is going to be the derivative function. So let me actually add a new expression for the derivative. So I'm going to call d sub p as a function of a. I'm going to call that dda of f, oops, f sub p of a. So I've just defined a new function to be the derivative of my old function. I'm going to click this so that I don't actually display it. You can control what things display and don't display. I'm just creating this function so that I have an easy way to evaluate the derivative. I want my slope to be the derivative evaluated at x1. And so now you see I've got my equation for the line. I've got the slope, 
which is being evaluated live as my x1 values change. And I've got my y value at that point. And as I move it around, you see you got the tangent line there. So that's a quick overview of the things that Desmos can do. Um, let's use it to quickly solve the problem from the last test. Um, I'm selling some fancy vacations. I'm doing a market study. I've determined that if I price my, price my fancy vacations at P dollars each, I will sell this many vacations. So let's make a function for the number of vacations I sell as a function of price. So I said it was 3,600 minus P divided by six. All right, so far so good. Um, in other words, blah, 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 not important. The cost per vacation to you depends on how many vacations I sell. All right, so I've got this cost per vacation equation. So this is cost, but it's a function of N, my number of vacations. I'm gonna make it actually a function of X. So it's 2,500 minus 3x plus 0.02x squared. All right, so now I've got a cost function. This is cost per vacation. This is number of vacations as a function of price. All right, uh, I wanna maximize profit. So let's make a profit equation. My overall profit is gonna be equal to my overall cost, uh, my overall revenue minus my overall cost. I'm going to make this C sub P for cost per vacation. And then over this big C is going to be my overall cost. All right, so I need to define R and C now. My overall, overall revenue should be equal to the price that I'm selling each vacation at times the number of vacations. So P times NP. What is it unhappy about here? Uh, can't define them in terms of each other. So let's make R be a function of P. And oh, I got a P here. So let's make this P sub R for profit. All right, so now it's happy with this. So I've got revenue is a function of the price of my vacations and it's the price per vacation times the number of vacations. All right, let's make cost now, the overall cost, as a function of the price of the vacation. So it's going to be the number of vacations that I'm going to sell at that price times my cost per vacation. And this was a function of the number that I sell. So I also have to have the number be the input to this. Great. Um, so now I just need this to be my overall profit is going to be a function of the price that I set the vacations at. And it's going to be whatever R of P minus C of P is. So now I've got all of my variables set up. Um, I'm interested in, I, the only equation I want to display is this overall profit equation. So let's now zoom out until I can see something interesting. All right, so here's something interesting. I'm going to projector mode. So I got a lot going on here. Um, I'm interested in where this function achieves its maximum and minimum values. So let's make a new equation. Y equals ddx, oops, sorry, ddp of the function p sub r of p. So this is graphing the derivative function now. And the derivative function, it's a lot clearer what's happening with it. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna make it a little less giant again. All right, so it looks like it's got a zero here at 3,034 and another zero at 4,766. The derivative values here are going from positive to negative. So that means my original function must have been increasing in this region. I'm going from increasing to decreasing. That means this must be a local maximum. Um, what is the function that I'm maximizing? It's this profit function. So that tells me that the x value, which maximizes my profit, is $3,034. Um, if I wanted to know what that actual maximum profit was, I could evaluate P sub R at the $3,034. And this is telling me what my actual profit 
if I priced my vacations at that price would be. So you see it's a really powerful tool for like very quickly exploring a whole lot of functions. It's like your graphing calculator, except in my opinion, a lot nicer. All right, so uh, why don't you try a couple of problems on your own with this just to fiddle around with it. And probably tomorrow, maybe next week, I'm gonna give you a really meaty modeling problem to cut your teeth on. Enjoy.